G'day folks, Ronnie Dahl here for Wheeling Australia. In this video, we're gonna talk about this new trailer right here, the X1N, which I picked up about 10 days ago. We're also gonna talk about the trip I just did, the tag along tour with the girls. What I found was the most used items I brought with me, not just to do with the trailer, but camping related, and what I used, so you guys can get some good ideas. So, this is two days ago. We are currently on a tag along tour. This is the uh, only one I do every year. My, my annual trip to uh, Twyla Cove. Absolute amazing place, as you can see. This is not my regular quality video because I'm traveling with two kids. So I want to show you how I've camped. It's not, it's not a high production, that's what I'm trying to say because I've only brought my vlogging camera with me and a couple other cameras, mainly stills. So this is my campsite right here. So I've got the cruiser there. Got the new Patriot X1N. Had that trailer literally for five hours before I left Perth. It all just just happened. It all happened. It all just happened on that one day. Picked it up, packed it, and then threw the kids in the car and off we went. It was a bit of a rush to get going, but that's what we got there. Now because of COVID, I couldn't get my um, double swag across from the other side of the country. So I've had to go with the RV5. Now I've had this tent for 12 years, believe it or not, 12 years, thereabouts. And it's still going strong. Welcome back to the future. We're going to dissect this trailer very fast, very quick, so we go through it and then we can get to all the other stuff. And the first thing we're going to look at is the kitchen and the fridge, the rear storage, side storage, even more side storage, the man cave, and finally, the storage on top. Very quickly, this is different to the X2 in many ways, and this is one of the ways. Looks very similar here, right? And it is. All this set up here, we've got our little pantry here. We've got our top storage here, another storage here for your cooking. Same burner which I made a little wind deflector on, actually works really good. But what is different is the fact that it has airbags so I can level this trailer. For example, if I drop this side down. So you can level it out wherever you might be and pump it up. This is a different style kitchen on the X1N compared to the X2. The X2 had the kitchen at the back. It's got a kitchen here. Uh, managed to pick this up just before I left as well. It was a busy day, busy day before I left. So it's a 32 uh, litre angle. Um, it's got the sink which is plumbed in. That's one thing I really like about this. 150 litres of water. How much will be used? Ah, it says I'm close to empty. That's how much water I've used with two kids. It's still got 70 litres in, um, in the back of the cruiser as well. Everything, including the kitchen sink. This is like a plate storage. Have all your plates. You could probably fit some pots and pans in there, I guess. It's got a little wet storage in here. And utensil drawer. Before we move to the back storage, it does have a BMS 30 and it's got two deep cycle batteries. I'll probably change those to lithium later on. Let's move to the back. The X1N, it has a spare wheel on the back, which, you, which I kind of like because should these fail on corrugations, these snap off or for whatever reason, at least this wheel is gonna hold this door from falling open. Not that it's happened to me. This is the rear storage. Complete storage all the way in. Heaps of room actually. Here's some drawers all tent pegs and all the other stuff. It is a diabolical mess at the moment because I was camping with kids. I still gotta go through and clean all this stuff up. On the X2, I had a big pantry that was combined with the fridge. In the X1N, I don't have a pantry except for that little one over there. So we are using a box and we just put all our food in it. That's all the food we got left. So we went through quite a bit of food, those kids. <laughs> Down here, we got our wet storage. My youngest daughter's been filling that up with seashells and all kinds of stuff she's found, rocks and whatnot. 
In there, keep my ocker bags. Now, to get to that one, you've got to close all this to get to it. So let's just keep moving. Now onto the side storage. This is probably the, another main storage area. It's got loads of storage. I used to think the X2 had more storage, but the X1 actually has heaps more storage. Also because it's a bit longer as well. So in here, I normally keep three of these bags, two of them at home. That's got the kids clothing in it. So this is something I learned from Justin as well. Whatever they can fit in those bags is what they can bring. So this one here is full of you know toilet paper, wipes, and this even got some towels in there. Kids clothing bags shoved in here. This I'll get back to later. That's all my sleeping bags. We have the 350 watt inverter in here, which I haven't used much to be honest. Just charged a drone with it. Bit of storage up here for, I guess if you're charging something, you can put it up there. Now this storage here. This has been pretty handy. I had a big, big angle bag in here with all my um, uh, fruit and veg in there. It was just to keep it a little bit cool. And uh, a couple of cartons of beers. And up here is all lightweight stuff I put up here. So I even put the eggs in here. So they were protected by all the soft stuff here. Bread, rags, uh, toilet paper, all that soft stuff that's not gonna bang around and ruin stuff. The water heater. Let's go back to the future and talk about that. In the X1N you get this gas heater here. What I don't like about the gas heaters that you get with trailers is they use too much water. It's all good and well if you're in an area where you've got you know, accessible water that we can fill up again. But out here in the bush, even with 150 litres in this tank, I find that running a shower through this system and the pump that's in here, it pumps too fast, too much water. So, um, I in fact just heat a bucket and use this little companion shower thing. This is what I'm talking about guys. $30, actually this might have been $70 actually. 70 bucks, 70 bucks. Aqua pack, drop it in. And you're gonna have a shower. Now the beauty about this is, this is a nine liter bucket. If I put nine liters of water in that bucket, that's all I'm going to use. I'm not going to be running through a heavy pump that's going to take water out to an amount that I don't know. So 150 liters ran out in eight days because we kept using the water on, on the tap. It's a very high pressure tap. So showers, definitely recommend filling up a bucket. And look, five liters does me. Nine liters will do a lady's hair, like long hair, washed and everything. The other thing, steel bucket, I can heat this in a fire. Or I can use my jet boil and boil up one pot of water, throw in, throw in the cold water, and I'll have nice warm water for a shower. That's all you need. Just like the X2, the jockey wheel is a removable one, and we need to remove that to get into here. Now there is a way of doing it, so you don't have to remove it. That I haven't quite worked out yet. Now I'm not gonna bore you too much in here because you already know this system. This is the man cave. We have the Weber Q here, camp oven here. I keep ground sheets in here as well. Nice and tight. Something I do wanna show you though, mainly for Patriot camper trailer owners. You know that um, bag you get all your, um, uh, what do you call it, all the instructions in? And all the paperwork? You know what? It fits these barbecue plates for the Weber Q so well in this bag. How cool is that? So I removed all that paperwork, put it somewhere else. And not only that, if you put stuff here, you can whack this in here, which helps lock in the lock-in tab, which holds the WebEQ tight in there. So there you go. Now we also have a tap here. That's where you hook up your shower and all that, or wash your hands when you close everything up. Still got 33s on it. I'm gonna change these to Razor 35s so they match the cruiser. And also, I find that at the moment, it's sitting on the hitch, it's sitting a bit like this. So with 35s, it should be nice and level that way. Now, as you saw with the airbags, I can level it this way. So if you did put a rooftop tent on it, which this one doesn't have, you can then level it out. And you can use a jockey wheel to level it out the other way. Speaking of which, no roof tent. So I've gone with the RV5. That we'll talk about very soon. But on top here as well, it comes with this roof rack that's on here. I think that's done by Patriot as well. We have this skid row thingamajig here. This is for your jockey wheel. So it's also a recovery, but I use this to put under my jockey wheel when I park up. It just prevents the um, jockey wheel from sinking into the sand. Pretty cool kit. This one here 
is my chainsaw bag and chainsaw. We use that quite a bit on a trip. And I'll just come around to your side. But before that, there's an awning here. This is a super peg awning. I haven't tried it at all yet. Let's go back to the past about this storage case. I'll tell you exactly what I use it for. So this one was sent to me by Chaos. It's a Chaos box. It's actually a really handy box. When you go camping, you always got gear, you don't know where to put it, and you end up with a bloody mess everywhere. So that is what this box has been become. It's just fishing gear, uh, spare drink bottles, whatever, dirty clothes, whatever I need to get rid of in a hurry because I am running a tag along tour. Um, we're constantly moving, setting up camp, and having two kids with me is a bit of a challenge, I've got to be honest. So I'm running a tour, two kids with me, uh, but I'm managing pretty good. One of the main differences between the X2 and the X1N is the fact that this has airbag suspension, twin shocks with airbag suspension. I've towed an X1 before with this same configuration, and I can tell you what, they, they handle so awesome, they handle better than my actual cruiser, and look, even though the X2 was a really good trailer and handled everything really well, this handles it way better with that airbag suspension. There's no rebound, so if you get the trailer off the ground because you're going fast over a dune or you hit something too fast or too hard, it'll, it might jump, but as it comes down, it just absorbs it. There is no rebound, there's no continuous bounce like I've had in other trailers in the past. Another difference between this and the X2 is the fact that the X2 had a 70 litre water tank, might have been 75. This has a 150 litre water tank. One more difference with the X1N to the X2 is it's bigger. So the X1 is approximately this much bigger. Well, it's actually, in fact, it's one foot bigger, 300 mil. Because of that, I've found this easier to reverse. I don't know why that is. The drawbar is the same length. Everything's the same, but I just find the X1 easier to reverse than the X2. Maybe I've just gotten really good at it now. I can't really explain why. It just feels easier to reverse than the X2. To accompany the trailer, I still use the cruiser storage a little bit. So we got still got the 40 litre Ingle fridge, MTV fridge freezer on the back here. Now in here, the fridge you saw before is a 32 litre. So in total, I have 72 litres of fridge or freezer space. And I made the freezer zone bigger in this one for this particular trip. It was plentiful for two of my daughters and myself, heaps. This is a ground mat I always choose to use, especially on the, on the beach. It's one of those sea gear mats. Now, I've ditched the bag because it's such a pain in the ass to fold up, so I just do one of these tie straps around it. Chemical toilet, always a good thing when you're traveling with young kids as well. And in Australia, you need, or it's particularly Western Australia, you need a chem loo for a lot of places you go. Now, that we didn't use too much, uh, but I'll get to the best and most useful uh, camping bits of gear that we did use. Inside this box, this box always comes with me right here. It just sits perfectly between the ingle and the tray. That's most of my fire cooking stuff in here. So, yeah, just billy cans and whatnot. Tea and coffee around the fire. It's all here. If I want to pull up and have a tea on the, on the track or the road, just start a quick fire and make a tea. It's right here, it's ready to go, that's what, and that's why I choose to put it in the back of the tray. Alright, let's check out the RV find. As I said, I've had this for 12 years. Now, it's been over a year since I used it last. Heaps of room. And I've got these mattresses here, which I picked up from my mate at Go Camping. See the Summit ones? Now, these roll up pretty tight, they're self-inflatable. We got three of them. They are super comfortable. Now, the first time we unrolled them, it wouldn't really suck the air in, they're self-inflatable. But since I um, pumped air into them, this is a pump bag that you hook into it. So you got this little point here. That point hooks into here. That's the valve closed. Self-inflating valve, sucks in air as you can hear. We can do it fast by this. You can see it's expanding already. Or if you want to get the air out, you go one way on pushing air out, now it can't suck air in. You simply squeeze it like that, and you put air in. 
it looks like a tedious process, but it actually isn't. Uh, when I first rolled these out, I thought, what have I done? Because they, they were really flat to start with, but once you um, put air in it once, all you gotta do is roll them out next time and they come to this same shape. Really comfortable, we don't need any more air in it. I find that if you put too much air in it, you feel like you're gonna roll off it. That amount is really good. Now, I can touch the bottom, but once my whole body's laying on it, it, uh, it's evenly distributed. There are two ways you can fold these mattresses. There's a triple fold, like this, which I did day two of the trip. And then there's just push as much air as you can out of it, which is really fast actually. And then you roll it up and then it takes up this much space. Now, you can make it fit into these smaller bags that it comes with. And if you need space, sure, do that. But this is just easier. It doesn't take up too much more space and it didn't take much time. But to start with, I was regretting getting these, but now I'm super happy because the sleep we got on these was incredible, I've got to say. Here's a catch though, the price. It's up there in price, but you pay for comfort. Kids with me, tag along tour. It was a bit of a rush for me to, to pack up every morning with the free mattresses and free sleeping bags. So, I roll everything up into one pile right here. As you'll see on your screen right now, I'm unrolling it, there's three sleeping bags. So, one, two, three. Daddy. Hannah, me, Sienna. Roll it out, spread them out, done. Roll them back up, one pile, you do it once, not three times, you're not trying to squeeze it in a bag. That's what you end up with. And I actually think you get more room because it's all right here. You're not digging for two or three bags as well. So that is my top sleeping bag tip for you guys. The girls are using their own pillows from home. Um, just to have a bit of creature comfort, that is a good thing to have, so, you know, so I do feel a little bit home still. And these pillows, these are also Cedar Summit ones, they roll up quite nice and tight. That's what I use. Oh, it's a bit dirty there, isn't it? <laughs> Here's a tip for anyone with an RV5 or a 4. All your clothing bags, whack right at the end, at the head end, and then you don't need to put the extra three pegs in on the back to pull the tent out. Otherwise it caves in. The girls have got their bags on the other side. I've got my bag right there in the middle. Yes, camping with kids, there's a lot of sand in here. But we find that with these mattresses, there's gaps between. We just shake the sand off and go to sleep, worry about it another time. Because kids camping, you're gonna get sand in here. Talcum powder though. You want sand off your feet? Use talcum powder. Works a treat. All right, folks, now it's time to talk about the most useful items on this trip. And they're gonna be quite random. They're not gonna be what you expected. Maybe this one you might expect. I've talked about this a lot, the shower tent. But it's not useful because we use it for showers. No, I only have one shower during eight days. And the girls are just washed with uh, wet cloth. Actually, one of them did have a shower. So two showers only. But I got this out, I kid you not, probably 10 times a day. 10 times a day. I had this out and I'll tell you why. There's a bit of wind around so there's something else I can show you here at the same time. So we were driving around and the girls needed to go to the loo. I'm running a tag along tour. I'm at the front. So what did I do? Pull up to the side, pull the shower tent out. If there was a bit of wind, I'll grab it like this or one of my daughters would hold it for the other one and uh, jump in, they do a little piddle on the ground, all done. Use a wipe if they need to, throw that in the tray because we don't leave wipes and toilet paper in the bush. One done, let the next one in, finished. Close the tent, got a whole convoy behind me. They're all walked into the bush to do a piddle. By the time this is all up, the girls are back in the car, seat belts are on, we're ready to go. Most useful item on the trip by far. Second most useful item of the whole trip, the sandboard and buckets and spades for sand digging and stuff. In other words, kids, toys, outdoors, outdoor related toys to the environment you're in, you'll find that they're so useful because that's when you get a break from your kids as well and they get to just play by themselves. So that is my number one tip, second, second number one tip, number two tip I should say, bring something that will keep them occupied in the environment so they can have some fun too.
Alright guys, to cap off this video, here are things that I forgot and lacked having on the trip. Number one was easy food. I had to do a lot of cooking. Now, when you're camping with kids, they're out in the fresh air, they use a lot of energy. They are probably going to eat almost twice as much as they normally would at a home dinner table setting. So that's where I lacked a bit. Also snacks, I lacked on a bit. Apples, bananas, I ran out of that pretty quick. Um, so have more snacks, have more food than what you think you need for your kids especially. And try and have the same meal as your kids, even though they might be a bit bland, just add lots of salt and pepper. That's if you want a relaxing day or night. So, you know, obviously cook some nice steaks and other things that you like to eat that your kids might not want to eat at other times. But just make sure you have enough for them kids because I ran out pretty early on. Um, another thing I lacked was my head torches. They were actually hard to find because kids are kids. They keep moving them around. One more thing I was lacking was some warm clothes for myself. Because I also focused on packing for the kids, making sure they have warm clothes and I kind of messed up a little bit. They end up using one of my jumpers, my only jumper I had with me for the whole trip. So I was a bit cold at night. So pack two jumpers. Always pack for all four seasons when you go camping. What else did I lack? Not really too much more. I had it down pat pretty well. Um, look, a lot of people think it's hard work taking kids out camping. Your kids are generally occupied and they'll learn a lot more when they come out in the bush. So I did some single parenting with two kids and running a tag along tour. So if I can do that, you can definitely take two kids out on your own and go camping. Even better if you can get the missus out too, or your partner. Um, so just give it a crack guys, and any questions, put them down below, and I'll make sure I will answer some of those in another video, or maybe in the comments below. So thank you very much for watching. See you next time.